many previous that you're quite quite often seeing two people on one scooter. Yeah, I've seen that as well. Yeah. And of course they're just dumping them most well, not all the time, but a lot of the time they're just dumping them as and when they finish them. So there is, I believe, uh, something on site on online sorry, where we can make any objections. Um, On the 25th. Yeah. Is that a meeting or a It's a Zoom meeting yeah, that was made meeting. by Tom Lacey and all were invited last yeah. week to yeah. attend. Yeah. So anybody want to go on the Zoom meeting on the 25th of um, November? Yeah. Uh, April? Yeah. Uh, please go on that Zoom meeting and Air your objection um, to, to uh, the exclusive. So we will pass on that. That's still ongoing. So to know the outcome of the previous planning applications and other documents pertaining to the planning and environmental issues. If you see the decision, that they were all yes, apart from the log lobby down over five meters of the tree in Cook's Close. Why they want to get to that? Um, yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah. Then the next one is number eight. Um, to prepare responses for proper authority regarding the planning application related to planning state. So we've got number one, erection of a single story rear extension to build additional living accommodation at 91 14 square. Can you see the screen on the other end? Those of you on Zoom? No. No, no. okay, hang on. <coughs> Sorry. second. Pass a message on. I did. It thanks for that. Okay, so the image that we're looking at is this house here. takes a bit longer than Sharon. Yes, Let's have a look. I'll show you the existing plans. 
But you're doing a great job. Thanks. Thanks. Don't be so. One more thing. Existing plans and elevations. Those plans and elevations. Everybody see that? Yeah. Site plan, site location plan, existing plans, site location plan will just show you the location of the actual address. But did you want to go back to the existing plans and elevations? Yes. Yeah. 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 That's the one this time, yeah. Is it within, within the compound? That's fine. Yeah. What was that, Paul? I was just looking at the boundary of that application, whether it's coming to the side. I think it's fine. Yes. Yeah, you know it. It would be a better development under normal terms anyway, wouldn't it? So, yeah. 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 Tom would like to propose that we accept that one. Anybody like to second it? No questions. So Ed seconded it. Who's in favour? Aye. What's he at all? Can we just shut the screen down? Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, it's all done. And again, those in favour, we've got the proposed text to the spell. Yeah, he. And the, yeah, Ed, the proposed text, that's the, everybody's top. Yes, I'm saying. Yeah. 
Well, I'm going to keep the door and get enough force to make it work. Okay. Uh, so uh, we've got one abstention. Any objections? Uh, um, that's the next one. It's the installation of one rear dormer to facilitate the loft conversion at 97 the way. So let's look at the Okay, so ninety seven is this house here. This one, so got it. So I don't know if anybody. Let me just reduce that one. And let's go into the proposed plans and elevations. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Saying I'll get the proposed ones. So these are the proposed ones. I wouldn't say that's in keeping with the area. When you look at everything else that's in the area, it's that would stand out like a sort of yeah, there's no more there, is there, with the uh, dormers? There's no other dormers, no there around that area. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, so, as you know, Andy, South Glass didn't like these years ago, but they seem to... And that, that's massive. It's not very attractive either. That's massive. Yeah. It's only like two bedrooms, I think. What terminology could be used to object to this? Yeah. 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 Well, they not be in with the streets. Yeah, that's a good one. So, um, who would like to propose that? Yeah. I think that was Keith. And uh, somebody to second that? I could. Ed would like to second that. So, those in favour of rejecting this application? Yeah. Uh, that's. Uh, He's gone. Ed. Ed is uh, the uh, So th those in favour of proposing the objection? Yeah, I'm in favour of it. Yeah, we're, we're proposing to reject it. Those yeah. not in favour of rejecting it. Now, um, anybody abstain abstaining? Uh, Tom is obstinate. Okay, so that's carried. So the next one is the erection of a single story rear extension to provide additional living accommodation in two large um, space. Yeah. 
Can you see that? Number two is right on the corner, uh, Tom. I think it's without us, whether they can see. One second. Yeah, my, my, my is coming. Yeah. They can see it. Yeah. yeah. No, we can see Yeah. Excellent. Right. Okay. So let's go into the existing elevations. Somebody who is in the word is 
has got a number, but it's the majority against this application. So, that one. Um, and then the last one is the erection of a terrestrial side extension to form additional living accommodation 78 foot birds. Okay, so it's the lovely house here with the addition of solar panels. There's that house there. <coughs> On the street in there. Existing block plan of renovations. This is the existing elevation. I'm just going to have a look somewhere. Oh. Down there, do you have a 
Uh, so all the traffic will have to go in that one entrance for the whole part of that estate, and it will have to all go out that entrance as well. So as you said, anybody going to the pub <laughs> will all be, you know, racing back round Bush to get back to Gypsy Patch. Now, uh, along with this, Mark King said that they would actually start possibly to work on the highway earlier than expected to try and speed things up. Now, John did actually ask, well, why didn't you do this at the very beginning while Gypsy Patch has been closed? You could have quite happily have been doing the highway. And Mark's response was that had they started that work and there had been further problems with the bridge, we could have found ourselves being, you know, having to pay a lot of money to the contractor for holding things up. So, for obvious reasons, they say, you know, it's operational issues. So we'll all just have to grin and bear this. I think that's very easy to say that to the residents that have put up with a nightmare here ever since the project started. And I told the project manager that he should go around and see one of the residents because she is complaining now at our meeting last night about the flooding. And bear in mind, we have Monday rain uh, that's appearing near her house. So what exactly is happening? But they're going to come back with a further update on Monday at the liaison group meeting. And I did say, well, we've got a Bradley Stowe meeting tonight, so I'll break the news to Bradley Stowe councillors. Um, but for obvious reasons, there will be uh, a news press release coming out at some point on this. So that's it. That's the latest. Not very good news, is it? I don't know. It's an ugly bridge as it is. <laughs> And, you know, if they start doing the widening and doing the road, fair enough, that might speed things up a little bit. But I think uh, November, December of 22 is a bit to stomach, really. You've gone very quiet, Ed. <laughs> I, I, I'd like to ask a question. Yeah. Um, we, we've seen what flooding does and we've seen all these barriers being put in around the country and some of them are on their third attempt to stop flooding and every time they say it won't happen. So since we have early warnings that water is already at a um, level or, or encroachment to be of concern, what guarantees is South Gloucestershire Council Bradley Stoke involved, but well, we're not involved, are we really? Um, we are we, by the fact that you travel through the road. <laughs> Everybody does. Through it. But I, I, I'm worried about the level of, of, of encroachment and damage to people's homes. And they want to come back, I mean, while we're listening to this, what come back is they're by the residents if they get flooded. That is the issue that uh, Jenny Vaughan has, one of the residents who was at our meeting last night. We've, or Brian Hansen has sent numerous letters, I brought it up at the liaison group, that they have an obligation to these residents, especially the ones that are living right next to this monstrosity, because that's what it is, it's an ugly bridge, uh, but they've experienced all the noise, all the disruption, all the issues that are happening, and they'll have ongoing issues because they've lost all the trees, they've lost everything there. And, you know, we've repeatedly said somebody needs to take ownership of what can be done to mitigate any of this for the residents like her. Who's going to pay her compensation, triple glazing, all the rest of it? You know, there is a real need, but, you know, Jenny is banging her head up against the brick wall. The liaison group, it's not in our view, met on the liaison group to deal with a claim. That is something that she will have to address through people to do with Network Rail and the contractor working on behalf of Network Rail. But obviously, this now affects all the residents there. While they widen the road, lost all the trees, lost everything, and now further problems with the road being closed that the hassle is going to give to everybody and possibly loss of income to 
businesses, pub me, clubs, who knows? Yeah, it would. Um, so from our point of view of Bradley Stoke, stepping back again to our, uh, our part, is that when we were consulted about this, you raised the issue as a town councillor, not South Gloss, so to say, uh, to point out that part of our traffic problem of exiting Bradley Stoke in and out would be that that road was being lowered into a water table that was already known. Well, that's why they put in, correction, not one pump, but three, and it looks as if it, you know, this way, who knows, it might even have to put in some form of turbine to, you know, to deal with the amount of water that they're finding on that site. They've experienced all the issues with the soft ground when they were moving the structure, the way it dug in and couldn't be in it, they couldn't put the bridge in situ. Uh, it's caused an absolute nightmare right from the whole start of the project. One of the councillors this afternoon stormed out of the meeting. He was lost for words. And he wasn't going to be, you know, having to commit himself for what he was about to say to the project manager of this project. But I think it's an absolute appalling situation. A whole lot. It, it, it sounds very, very poorly run. Uh, yeah. in terms of the run. I, mean, I haven't seen much of it, but my concern is that when you look at um, our residents, that when, as soon as COVID is free, everybody's going to go back to work, everybody's going to be wanting to be commuting, yeah. and that, that is a um, choke point. We're all back in. Let's <sighs> flip with the internet. So, okay. Keith, if you uh, would like to continue with the uh, our railway matter, yeah, um, I, I'm not sure what you caught of it. Uh, so we got to the point where there was a neighbour that it was um, looked like they were going to get flooded. And then right. We... Well, Jenny Vaughan, the, the, the local resident, attended our parish meeting last night, planning meeting, and she raised the issue of water that is collecting around her home. Now, today, on the back of what is, you know, being, being told to us all, uh, they will say, well, of course, that's why they're trying to address all the drainage issues now, is to try and deal with some of that. And, you know, Mark King said, well, you know, we've had to install a pump, and I corrected him there. I said, Mark, we were told three pumps. Because you cannot manage the water on that site. And now you still can't manage it. If you've got three pumps and you've got a dry spell like this, one resident there is really, really anxious about what this is going to do to her property. Yeah, cool. now, obviously, that claim will be something that she will have to put in and address with people within the council or Network Rail's project managed team. Yeah, you know, but at the end of the day, I think we're just going from one calamity to the next. And to be told this afternoon that they're now going to be looking at, you know, a further year of disruption, I think that is absolutely appalling. But let's be honest, you know, I'll say it, because I will dare to say it, anything to do with Metrobus has been an absolute disaster. It's overspent, overrun on projects cause chaos wherever it goes. And let's be honest, this is not just about a bus. This was supposed to be a route for a shuttle bus. Now, the shuttle bus, to widen the road for a small bus to get you to the mall from, from Parkway, it's not about that. It's about the commuting traffic, all types of traffic, HGVs, everything. Let's be honest, that's why they need that road and that bridge to be so high and so wide. It's an absolute nightmare for everybody, but there you are. That's what they told us today. I'm sure Sharon or Odell, I don't know if you're at the meeting on Monday, if Sharon's not, um, but there is a liaison group meeting on Monday and there'll be further, you know, stuff put up, put out to us all. And I'm sure it'll be a very lively meeting. Yeah. Um, it, I, I was wondering if there's any redress whatsoever on the architects or engineers who actually specify 
the um, the type of drainage that they're going to use. Maybe that's something that Sharon or whoever attends on Monday can bring up on behalf of Bradley Stoke. But it's my guess they will say it's a utility, and the Railway Act seems to cover them as far as utilities go, like we saw the other monstrosity that went up at uh, Stoke Gifford, the um, high rise, uh, you know, um, uh, car park. <laughs> Uh, they, they didn't have to have planning consent. They can just do what they want on their own land. But I think this one, let's be honest, it, it does interrupt the life of everybody who uses that road. People that have to get to their jobs, the Rolls Royce and Aerospace and Royal Mail Centre, we're all in now, it, you know, having to operate normally. It would be absolutely chaos. It really would. And then one other thing that did come up, and I asked the question on the back of something that was raised last night, was there seems to be several entrances going into the New Horizon site. Now, originally, it was just one. And I tackled this with Mark King as to which one of those entrances the Metro bus is going to actually use. And is it still going to come out further up the A38, which is what we were all led to believe originally, wasn't it? It was going to come out somewhere uh, nearly up by the, 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 the lakes, as we call it, as you turn off to go underneath where the blood banks are. Uh, and then it would go into the airfield that way. Well, apparently it's all changed. Uh, the bus is now going to enter Titan Way, which is the... Uh, entrance further up near the hotel, I think. And then it's going to do a quick turn back onto the A38. So why it's got to go in there at all won't be honest, beyond me. But it will come out straight away on the A38, and there will be a dedicated junction going straight across to the airfield. Now, how are they going to manage that one? Is it going to be traffic lights on the A38? Is it going to be another roundabout? You tell me. But, you know, it seems that whatever was said years ago, it seems to be all being changed again. We were told one entrance, just past the bridge, bus would go in, go round the site, come out at the top end of the site, a very brief journey then before it goes under the road where it would go to, you know, the Verador site where you can come back into the airfield under the road. Well, apparently that's no longer the case. It's all changed. Just a second, uh, Andy Alexander, just now, first. It was just a query going back to the pumps and everything. Are they proposing to put some form of backup power or generation there or, or anything? Because I think, it, I think if you go down there now, I, I took a short walk on the weekend, and you can hear the pumps, or you can hear some motors going. I mean, it's quite noisy in that bridge area. Um, I can understand their residents still. They've got to put up with that level of noise. And it's not it's certainly not coping with it now. So whatever are they going to do to cope with this? We've got to have some form of backup because if we get in kind of weather, you lose the power, that's going to flood and they're going to, well, it's not going to be close to that. But that's why that's why it's already gone from one pump to three pumps. At this, at this rate, we need a turbine in there to deal with the levels of water, won't we? Yeah. Uh, Ed? Yeah, um, here's my question for us to think about. Um, as, as a project manager that's dealt with um, projects of building campuses, when I had a project and it was signed off, anything that changed could, couldn't just be you, you cross the line out and say, I'm going to go do this. You, you, you then had to go get it re-signed off. So what, who, who is actually looking after this contract? Uh, with effect to Gloucestershire and, and the township that turns around and says, you got the agreement, we looked at it and said, yes, we've agreed with your plans, but you just seem to have this pencil idea that you could you, you can change a stroke of a rubber. Uh, who, who's in control of it? I think it's because, Ed, it's railway, and it's their contractor, Griffiths, and the contract for the highway side would be street care. That's the council. Well, of course, apart from taking down trees and putting in a few bus stops at the moment, 
there's nothing being done on the on the road. So that's why Mark King said it, they didn't start any work because they could have been criticised for wasting money. I, 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 I think this sounds like a bunch of monkey nut excuses <laughs> and, and, a, and on a lacklustre performance of people that have uh, that are out of their depth in the car park pub to put it in military terms. Uh, I, I, I would suggest, as a councillor and someone that knows Jack the Presti, that this gets raised to Jack the Presti's desk ASAP, because it's not just the poor lady that's getting flooded, the street will get flooded, and the next thing we know, no one's going nowhere to nothing. Jack the Presti has already been involved right from the very start, because one of the local businesses, the other side of the bridge, is a personal friend of Jack's, Strenko, the engineering company, because they do stuff for military contracts and all sorts. So they, they lodged their complaint because they were particularly worried about their jigs being set up. And, you know, when they were doing pile driving and any sort of structural work, the effects it could have on their engineering. Now, obviously, he's taking a keen eye on this, uh, but, you know, I think, yeah, I mean, on, on Monday, at the liaison group, I would suspect that, I don't know, is it going to be Sharon, or is it going to be Odile, or? I would imagine it would be Sharon Key. Right, well, I think, you know, Sharon does need to, obviously, be there and take a hand on, you know, our point of view from Bradley Stoke residents and uh, our own views that are being said here tonight. I mean, it mirrors really what councillors were saying this afternoon. Who, who is going to foot the bill for all this? And is there penalties involved? You know, I mean, there there should be. I mean, but I dare say the rel will get out of it as per usual and just say, you know, unforeseen difficulties and things like that. So. What has got to happen has got to happen, but you know it's the inconvenience on everybody, isn't it? Yeah, you're, you're right, Keith. Uh, one thing is with a, an exercise like this, when it goes through planning, um, at some point along the line, structural engineers would have been obviously involved in the structure of the bridge, but also they would have been engineers involved in the drainage. So yeah. yeah. It, what happens is that. When they submit their various calculations to work out uh, various sizes of, of drains, etc., um, it also then gets checked by that grocery show. That's right. You know. um, if they checked it and agree it, but probably falls into that grocery show's lap. At, at the meetings, at the meetings we've had with the um, project manager and others. Uh, it's been repeatedly said by Stoke Gifford dancers, and Ernie Brown has, has been very vocal and said, look, if you look at the lowering of the road, how it's been done, what it's going to be when it's finished, especially even now as it looks now, it's going to represent a roller coaster. It's going to look like a fairground ride. You'll have every kid that's driving a fast car Going, going through there and see how fast he can go down in the dip and up the other side, you know. I mean, it's awful. It really is. The whole, the whole plan and everything. And he's asked them to check that they've got their levels right. Should it be, you know, a, a lesser gradient so that it slopes up better than just this immediate dip down, you know. Uh, it's ridiculous. I mean, it just, it really does make you question whether or not the people that are project managing this project are actually capable. But, you know, I, I, it's not the first run in I've had with this guy. I did it when, it, when they were at Aztec West and Woodlands, and I'll do it all again, no doubt. I expect we all will. But I think the whole project has been absolutely woefully managed from start to finish. And wherever this Metro bus goes, it seems to take the chaos with it, doesn't it? Uh, okay, well, this, it's an ongoing scenario in it where we think we need to level some sort of formal objections or, or, or concerns. Do we, want to, do we want to make a proposal for Sharon to 
make uh, you, know, you know our feelings known on Bradley Stoke Council and on behalf of our residents? I think so. Yes, yes, I think so. And of course, it's not out there in the public domain yet. That's the thing. But on Monday it will be. So based on what we've discussed here amongst ourselves tonight, um, this is a planning issue with, that will affect Bradley Stoke residents and the community as a whole. So, you, you know, whatever our feelings are, do we want to relay them to Sharon to put to the liaison group on Monday? Uh, you know, I think that's probably a good idea. So you propose that piece? Yeah. Uh, second it, and mm -hmm. second it. Those in favour of it, try and write a letter. That's unanimous. Yeah. Unanimous. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Let's move on to the next one. Which is the uh, the Brookway chemical reduction scheme, where I know um, Don Ash and Roger were very active in getting the uh, Roger not to put in uh, Stephen Beesman all the way up there down uh, Brookway, and they compromised by putting a raised uh, crossing in instead. I've been contacted by a traffic police guy. Uh, he, he's no longer a policeman, but he was in a previous role, a traffic um, guy. Now, um, he's he wishes to make it known that he's very much against the installation of the bollards. Yeah. He said all the way down Brookway, yeah. wherever they put the bollards in, you see them knocked over or lying down on their side or damaged. Uh, now they go for these, or in, in some cases they put these sort of plastic ones, don't they, that bend or, you know, supposed to bounce back up straight, I don't know. Um, but, you know, he's, he's a resident of Bradley, so... He is affected by it, and he wishes those comments to be brought to council. So, you know, I don't know what your feelings are. Are there any bollards on this particular scheme? I, I haven't seen the scheme. I, I can't tell you personally, but is, um, all, all it is, uh, is, is it they're they're just raising the level of the crossing. Not with any bollards in anywhere. No, it, it, it's like a speed table then, is it? Yeah, it's like right. a speed policeman crossing. Right, the only, the only thing is, now speed tables are fine, but it's if they go for these bollards on the points of the curb, where you, where you would effectively join the speed table. If they do that, and they sort of build out on the curb, which they tend to do, as a built out and then the speed table, uh, that can cause the issues, obviously, because you get the cars coming along straight and then they have to swerve to go round the bollard to then go over the speed table, if you're with me. Yeah, I'm with you entirely. It's not quite like that, Keith. It's right. like, what are they doing? They're just widening the pavement uh, 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 both sides and then putting in a crossing of which will be raised. As a, as a, see what Andy's got in his hand. Uh, yeah, as opposed to putting Stephen Policeman all the way down the road. Yeah, I mean, that, that, I think the Stephen Policeman, the speed table, is, is a good design. But what he's pointing out as a, as a traffic policeman yes. is that he is absolutely opposed to the bollards. And yes. could we do everything in our power? to stop them putting those bollards in, you know. Go for the go for the lesser uh, thing, if you like, you know, the, the flat type ones, but try and avoid the metal bollards, because A, they cause a lot of problems to your car if you let them, uh, but they can also kill motorcyclists and all sorts, you know. It's, uh, On this scheme, uh, Keith, there are no bollards. Yeah, well, I think that, that should be fine, but isn't this just for noting as it's a consultation at the moment? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, that's just a note, it's a um, big So, let's move on. Um, so, number 10 is to deal with matters related to health and safety. 
Okay, I mean, this, this is something that obviously Vic has compiled, it's in your agenda pack, and hopefully you've read everything that's on there. See if there's mm -hmm. any questions. Any questions on the health and safety? Well, I've got an observation, John. The um, bus shelter on the buses, I'm afraid it's all in, going towards um, the Georgia. One of the panels has been picked up. I said picked up, removed somehow. That one of our first stop. I think it is. There are three separate panels. And the middle one, part of the backing is missing. Yeah. What we did was suggest at one point that the first stop that we would have taken out from the first step building we would have utilized them to drop that to repair our existing bus shelters. They're slightly different, the ones that have been removed, slightly different to that one. I think some of the panels were damaged. That's something that the staff pick up on checklists. They do check the bus shelters regularly, so that's something that will be addressed. That seems to be missing for a good month. Yeah, If you're going on the various in on your left hand side, you're going up the road towards the main. Like all the past work, there's a bus stop in the shelter about 20 yards beyond the ground. I think so. Yeah. It's been operated with the ground, right? Yes. Uh, the, the bus stop by the primary school, the paper doesn't wind up. Yeah. Down by the paper stop, because you've got the grass area at the bus stop. The bus stop is under the side. Okay, so Dell's made a note of that to uh, look into uh, very much. see what we can do the picture. Uh, and any other comments on health and safety around the site? I've got one comment on the orders placed during the paper. Um, towards the bottom of the first page is uh, we placed broken concrete mixer. Oh yeah. Concrete mixers, in my mind, tend to be far more than 400 tons. This is the last A great big noisy piece. That's only a small, like, presumed plug-in one rather than a big, big one. It's only a small round stop. This is an electric one that went off the generator, shouldn't it? We're on the yeah. Right, okay. Um, sure. Can we pass all our thanks as uh, a committee to Vicky for compiling the report? Yeah, sure. Uh, the, the, my, only, my only comment, which I, I can't see on here, is um, our equipment that is owned which the cricket club uh, use. What health and safety, i.e. training, is being done and who do we know that's actually using that equipment? That's the question. Uh, because we really need to know that the people that are using that equipment are trained know how to use that equipment. Um, and at this moment in time, I don't think that we do know. A, who's actually using it and whether or not they're actually trained to use it. Because if there is an accident with our equipment, and so that's just a, a, an observation which um, Dell's making in that point. Yeah. I mean, I observe them when they're actually doing the maintenance yeah. as part of my role, yeah. making sure they're wearing PPE, and the risk assessment suggests that the cricket club have had training. But obviously that was when John was here and obviously that was some while ago and that yes. Yeah. So we need to know that they've got that to their training. Okay, and then so that's health and safety. Number eleven then is to approve the bills and direct credit for payments. There is two amendments to this and they've only come in and this was uh, 
asked by Rachel, because obviously it's the end of year and the next meeting to um, approve this is actually late April. If you look at the bottom, I can, there, are, there is a refund on the 23rd of the 3rd. If you go down to one of suppliers by internet payment, that's on the front page. Um, in that column, there's a the netball team refund of the booking of £112.05. And then there is an addition of uh, some one fly blue towels and black fat. So there's an addition of £173.58. Make a total there. Um, so there's an addition to that amount, which takes the 2,935 up to 3,108.58 pence. And the refund is included with that. Any comments on any payment? Yeah, I Thank you all. Thank you all.